What's up guys, Gums here, and welcome back to Pro Cycling Mode 2022 for episode number 50, the Garmin Sharp career mode. We've hit a milestone, and, uh, well, first of all, thank you for following this series for so long, uh, but today marks the beginning of the Vuelta. It is a custom-made Vuelta variant I've never used, just the first stage is, well, real, because uh, I got the variant with 19 stages. I waited until the penultimate rod of my team to go for uh, for Derek G to start this uh, this prologue. Turns out he's not having a good day. The uh, Canadian champion currently leading in Burgos is Tobias Foss, the uh, former world champion in the time trial element. Ahead of Dan Hula and Christophe Laporte. Currently, uh, for us, our best rider is Matej Jorgensen, 26 seconds down on the um, on the Norwegian. We're not doing great. It's a tight, yeah, yeah, Luke Wood and uh, Matteo Gensen kind of follow each other in the in the, the ranking. I feel like Matteo and Vermarke are here as my main leaders. If I can even really say that I have leaders, I don't really think I do. Um, so we'll see how that works. Um, but I think I may just go stage hunting on this, uh, on this welter. And across the line for Derek G, it is going to be... 46 seconds down, that's actually my my third worst rider. Ow. People are gonna to cross the line for Orbea if he takes P1. Oh wow, he doesn't. He does not take P1, I, I expected him to do so. Vingegaard is one second off at the first instrument, that's kind of mental. And he finishes 6 seconds on behind. Uh, it's a three-way tie for the lead. Tobias Fuss takes the red jersey for Kofedis on the roads that they like. And one way for the first road stage of this Vuelta, uh, it is a plus four for Matthew Rizzutello, it is a plus three for Luke Wood, a plus one for Alex Vogel on what is um, his final Grand Tour with us. Same for, uh, I was going to say same for Parizella, but no, because he won the um, the Canadian NC, so he, he got himself an added season with us. Derek G got the same because he's the Canadian champion in the time trial aspect. Okay. Um, quick look at the, the start list, but we've got Vingegaard for Mercedes AMG. Um, we've got, I, I guess we've got Pierre Latour, but he's, he's not really a big man now, is he? We've got Remco Venepol for Spotify Quick Step. Um, we've got Henrik Mas for Sportza, or uh, what used to be Intermarché. Miguel Angel Lopez for JBL, who managed to find his way back into World Tour after uh, trading cocaine. Good! In the words of Giggs, I'm uh, trying my hardest to be at the front of the peloton here. Uh, we'll take the lead now with Kevin Vermarker. But it is remarkably difficult. It just... it just is. Um, also, I've just realized that my train is not in the right order, but it should be fine. Let's go 99 with Matteo Jorgensen. Uh, uh, of course, I'm against Filippo Ganna as well. Not exactly the easiest man to face when it comes to a train. Ethan Vernon has already started his efforts. Maybe a bit early for uh, the um, movie Star Rider. But you never know. Luke Wood. Oh god, there's still one kilometer left. Jesus Christ. Vernon, Vernon, Vernon. And somehow Ethan Vernon is going to hold on. It's a very odd sprint, but he, he does. It's a win for Ethan Vernon ahead of Matthew Muschietti. Dylan Groenewegen. Uh, I, I think I'm top six. Yeah, I'm sixth with Alex Vogel. I have no idea what just happened, but it did. The mountains begin already. Stage three, and uh, we, we are going to see some some shock results today. We've got the Port de Balles, and we have the Fontaine de l'Ours. Now, I do not know the Fontaine de l'Ours as a climb at all. I wouldn't even be able to, to tell you where it is, except though, I mean, now I know because I've looked at the stage profile. Um, but it is 12 kilometers at an average of 10%. Why have we not seen this climb before? At least I don't think I've seen it on the Tour de France. I'll try to anticipate. Uh, I attacked with Vermark uh, in the uh, Col de Monte. Gap was 2 minutes. Gap went up to 6 minutes. Uh, I've been dropped because of the sprint. I'll try and come back by pacing 89. Um, but the gap is now back to 2 minutes. And it's not even because the, pellet, the, the, the sprinters wanted to, to do anything at the sprint. I thought it could be because of that. It isn't. It's just because the peloton wants to murder me. Well, uh, I was well placed, uh, but Richitello somehow is just getting dropped. He's facing 86. I'm pretty sure it's because the game thought I was blocked by Parizella, even though I wasn't. Uh, but sadly, that's just ruined my stage. That's a shame. I was doing quite well for once. And I suspect that the final climb is going to be quite steep. 
and quite narrow. Yep. Somehow I'm right again. How, why? Like, Richitello was at the front of the group and Parizella literally sent him to the Shadow Realm. Uh, that's, there's just no other words. Or maybe Richitello is just shit because uh, I got dropped by literally the entire group. Which was already a group of dropped riders. Every single one of them dropped me. Cool. Ethanator is right there. I'm, I'm already three minutes behind Ethanator. This Vuelta is looking great! I'm sorry, is that the entire... Okay, now I thought that this was an entire team. Thibaut Pino is right ahead of Mikel Landa and uh, Valentin Madouas. Things you love to see. Uh, who's leading? Maxim Van Rils ahead of Sylvain Monique. Sorry, no. Van Rils, Vingegaard. I don't know where I got Sylvain Monique from. Mirore Lopez. There's Sylvain Monique with Henrik Maas. Cool. I'm eight minutes behind. That's my best rider right now. Like this right here. This is my best rider. This is my leader. I'm, I'm nine minutes down. I've lost one minute per kilometer in this one. Stage hunting, it will be for Garmin Sharp on this Vuelta. I expected it to be. I didn't think I'd lose 11 minutes on the first stage. To make matters worse, it's a minus five today for Matthew Ricciatello. I mean... <laughs> my Tour de France was already shit. I, I didn't expect the Vuelta to be this bad. The fact that I didn't strengthen the team for next year as well worries me. It really does. Brown McNall, I, I can't have McNall, C and Lenny on the same race anymore. Not if I want to be competitive on all three Grand Tours. I'll make that four Grand Tours with the Oceanian Tour now. Which will change, by the way, for next year. Um, it's either a revert to Down Under, or we change the race into another Grand Tour, potentially an American one. I've got like four variants, or, or three variants for a USA Grand Tour. So if you guys want to see that, uh, then do let me know. All right, um, the uh, recent results have forced me into changing my strategy, and as I said, stage hunting is now where I'm where I'm going for, or is now where I'm aiming. Um, marker was in the breakaway alongside Matteo Jorgensen. I've protected Matteo the entire day with Vermarker. Kevin has done a great job. And with 32k to go, Matthew Jorgensen finds himself in the leading group. It's a group with 30k to go and a 3 minute lead over the peloton. Only issue is that no one is relaying me. So I'm not really a big fan of that. Well, the breakaway stopped facing and the peloton came back. 15k to go and it's going to be a sprint with 39 riders aiming for the win unless someone attacks. I do have a decent-ish sprinter with Matteo if he can recover from the breakaway. Maybe there's a chance at taking the stage today in the streets of Sabinianigo. I'm sorry, I'm following Jonas Vingegaard. What are you doing? Jonas? Why Why did you let yourself get dropped? How... Who the fuck is... What is wrong with you? Why did he let himself being dropped? For fuck's sake! One drop once again. One singular drop and the AI cannot achieve it. 2.2k to go. It's going to be a win for Silva Monique because he's the only one of the teammate. Yeah, don't hesitate to launch the sprint, yeah? Bell ends. Well done. Well done. Congratulations. Monique claims the stage ahead of Steph Kras and Remco Venepol. Well done, Jonas Vingegaard. I don't know where the fuck you finished. But well done. I hope you're happy. I hope you're happy with your miserable little performance. Plus four for Luke Wood and Alex Vogel as we have a sprint stage on our hands between Yaka and Pampalona. Or Pam, Pam, is it Papelun? Is Pampalona Pampelun? I don't know. Uh, but either way, we've got a sprint stage. Can we finish in the top five for the first time in this Vuelta? I would not have my hopes this high. And there's 40 kilometers left. Uh, I was watching... Some, uh, well, I wasn't even watching on TikTok. I, I was just looking at my phone uh, because this is the transfer window, like transfer deadline day. As I'm recording this, uh, I'm trying to see what horrendous transfers my uh, beloved football club of Lyon is about to do. And it turns out, whilst in the process of seeing that we nearly signed Tiemwe Bakayoko, Carson Murphy has withdrawn from the race. So I'm quite sad. Because he could have been a nice, nice rider. I guess out of all my riders, he's the one I'd rather lose. Uh, because it's the one with the least amount of chances of winning the stage. Then again, not many riders in this team have the potential of winning a stage. I'm really trying to get at the front. I really am. 
This is this weird. The fact that I'm more likely to to completely rage out of nowhere on PCM than on fucking foot rivals or foot champs. Kevin! Oh, for fuck's sake, I pressed U instead of Y. Jesus. Oh. This game has an ability to piss me off. Which is, I must say, remote. Kevin! Oh, suck your mother. We're going back up. Th this game just, just, just makes my head in. Why is Raphael Parizella here? Who are you? Fuck off! Yeah? Fuck you. Oh, <laughs> he's been blocked again! I'm gonna cry. I'm, I'm actually. I'm. This. This is it. This is the end of my PCM career. Look, that's a win for Carlos Barbero because he's on his fuck his own. I don't understand. 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 I simply do not fucking get this game. How? How? Plus three for Jorgensen. Plus four for Vogel. Um. I cannot lie, I'm I'm really wishing for this welter to end. It's been four days, but I don't know. I just don't feel like this is the welter for me. Uh, how is how is Fabian Dubert leading the the points classification? How? Not gonna ask questions. I've learned better now. Uh, to just ask random questions about PCM because it doesn't bring. Any good. Uh, we'll attack with Jorgensen, Vermarker, and Parkzilla if if I'm allowed to. Oh, Quebec Assos. Yeah. I, I genuinely like you. I, I was a big fan of uh, of MTN back in the days. So don't piss me off. Even on a stage that usually would suit the breakaway. I mean, it's a mountain stage, stage 6. The peloton just, just is against any kind of fun. As Hugo Page, Marie Voet, and Ariane Levins are pacing, um, I mean, you've, you've got Kubek Asos pacing for Van Rils, you've got Sporza pacing for Henrik Mas, you've got me at the front with my entire team, just trying to have fun, and I can't even have that. The cap has gone back up, as we've, uh, now got less than 40 kilometers to do. Vermarke has moved into the, uh, provisional leading classification of the, uh, mountain. Sorry, the provisional lead of the mountain classification, that's a lot better when I speak English correctly. Um, it's a difficult day. It's a difficult day. I feel like Matteo Evenson can claim the stage. Vermarker, I'm, I'm genuinely using Vermarker so I can get the mountain points at this point. Like, this, this is... This is clear as day. I uh, I know I cannot compete for the stage win with Vermarker, so I'm just trying to get points. Defending uh, from the likes of Gerrit Xavier and Axel Mario. But we should be good. I feel like attacking at the very start of Ois. Um, Gerrit Xavier and Debot seemed good. Maybe not as good as Matteo, although Gabriel Xavier follows. Ah, we may have broken him. We may have broken Emmanuel Gabriel Xavier. The gap is 327k to go. Jorgensen and Gabriel Xavier are still technically together at the start of the at the front of the race. And the peloton is coming back quickly. 247, three minutes to go. Jesus. 220. Silva Monica has uh, sort of dropped Maxim Van Rils. 2.5k, 2 minutes. Oh, yeah, they're, 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 they're defeating me. I'm gonna get bullied. I'm gonna get bullied today. I just, it's, it's bound to happen. Sylvain Monique, Van Rils, and a poor Matteo Jorgensen about to get absolutely hammered. Unless, unless I can pull out the, the, the defense of the century. 600 meters. Okay, I got it. Unless he sprints, I've got it. And sprint he does not. Matt Jorgensen wins at the top of Ois after a very, very difficult day and a very difficult world But we finally have our win. Following our first stage win, uh, it's a very good day for the team. It's plus fives and plus four across the board. Uh, it's zero for Kevin Vermarker, but he is wearing his new jersey of a leader of the mountain classification. I'll wait for Matteo Jorgensen to get at the front so that I can attack with him once again. They've worked very well yesterday. The question is, can they work wonders today again? Well, only time will tell, but they're in the, they're in the breakaway. Why is the peloton already there? There's 65 kilometers left. There's no need for you guys to just already 
Be at the front. Let me breathe. Please. Um, so we got Koa, but not entirely. I, I, <clears throat> my rhythm was 87, and I, I, I just lost contact. <laughs> this fight going 87. I mean, I know Lukewood is only like 69 in Mountain, but still. Final 10 kilometers of this stage. Uh, we shall be reaching Santander today. We came back on Remke Venepol, currently wearing the white jersey in P7 of the GC. A bit of a, of a, of a slowdown here. That's the time chosen by Asbjorn Hellemoser to attack, followed by Frank Bonamor. Peloton does an answer immediately. Remke Venepol goes for it, followed by Mark Soler. Mathieu Jorgensen is in this group. Oh, and no one goes again. Why does the Peloton just never go for moves? Like, are, are they, are they aware? That, that it's quite ideal to like follow moves when you're trying to win the stage. I don't know. Like maybe it's it's something they haven't unlocked yet. I don't know. But it appears that Frank Bonamor is in prime position to take the stage in Santander uh, against Asbjorn Hellemoser. Although Lukewood is a uh, well, I'm tr I mean I'm trying, trying to come back. And come back I may. Come back, I may. 1.7k. Jorgensen is in prime position again. There goes Jorgensen. Hellemoser. Hellemoser still leading. Jorgensen on the left. Jorgensen on the left. Jorgensen on the left. Jorgensen for the back to back. He's going to go middle of the road as well to get prime coverage. And it's a win for Matthew Jorgensen ahead of Remco Venepoel and Lenny Kemner. Weird ass race. Some sprints to uh, just recover after the following uh, or the difficult stage that we've had. Leading the Mansung classification is still uh, Kevin Vermark. Uh, he's got a 12 point lead on Excel Mario. Fabian Dubé somehow still leads the green classification. However, Matteo Jorgensen is making a, a bid for a late comeback. Okay, 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 okay. GC wise, Van Rils, Henrik Maas, Sylvain Monique for the top three. Uh, top three dominated by countries with uh, red, yellow, and black in uh, their flags Belgium, Spain. Uh, Germany. That's see. This is great analysis. Like this, this right here is why you've subscribed to my channel it's for for this kind of of cycling again analysis. And hopefully, I can make this my job, not PCM, because don't think I can make PCM my job. Um, but just working as a sports commentator. It's what I'm, I'm studying for. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, ho hopefully, this kind of analysis gives me a job at Eurosport or GCN or something. Please. Eight kilometers left. I have royally destroyed Rafael Parizella as uh, Luke Wood now takes the lead of the peloton heading into Gijon. Six kilometers remaining. Here's Philippe Ogana, the, uh, the tractor. Actually, no, the tractor is Yves part. This is more of a, of a high class limousine. Not sure what that would be Italian, but we move 5k to go. Luke Wood, Wehrmarke, Vogel, Matteo Jorgensen. We're obviously sprinting for Alex Vogel today. Uh, but Matteo is there because of the points classification somehow I'm I'm going to have to care about it. Uh great work by Luke. One of the only riders so far that I can't really uh blame or fault in this well side. There goes Vermarke. And and what just like some sprints on the Tour de France they have not followed. That's three in a row for Matteo Jorgensen. I don't understand this game. I, I simply do not understand this 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 video game. Can someone explain to me how BZM works? <sighs> We've got the Anglia route. And sadly, sadly for us, our three-time stage winner, Matteo Jorgensen, is injured. And Kevin Wehrmarker has a minus three. This is probably the, the first time I'm heading into the Anglia route with literally no expectations whatsoever. The three riders in my team that don't have a plus five on my three climbers. I think this is going to be the chillest Anglia route for me. Um, but we've got 14k to go. I have no riders in uh, any contention. Somehow Matty Jorgensen is still in the first group. I'm not sure as to how, but there he is. He's, he's alive and kicking. Um, the breakaway is four minutes in the lead. No one was risky for the mountain classification. So that's good, uh, that's good. I managed to uh, not lose anything with Kevin Vermarke. He's gonna keep the jersey today. Unless Fabian Dubé wins, but he, let's be honest, he won't. Um, so yeah, I'll just enjoy the Anglia route, get dropped in about three or five kilometers, 
and enjoy the rest of the day as a, as a bystander, which is also my nickname when it comes to GCs this year on Grand Tours. And just like that, we are done! Alright, let's take a look at the front of the race, shall we? Borg one, who's happening? We've got Tobias Hahn, Johannes, no, we've got um, the other Johannesson that's uh, leading. Then Gino Meda, Lutsenko, Buitrago and uh, Felix Engelhardt. And then the peloton with Mass, Van Geel, Svanfielder, Carthy, Enrem Kevenepoel, Felix Gall just exploded. Where is Sylvain Monique? He was P3 this morning. Once again, he's about to go to P nowhere. He's dropped with Mikel Landa. That's a shame for his three fans. It's a very difficult Angliru. And also, I did not remember the Angliru being literally on a, on a cliff. Not only can he top the fjords, he can also top the Angliru to win today for the Norwegian rider of Spotify. Quick step, Mr. Anders Halland Janesson takes it ahead of Alex Lutsenko for a 1-2 for the, 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 the Swedish slash Belgium team. Rem Kvenepoel is the best of the favorites today, uh, with Henrik Maas following in his wheel. Carthy van Gils out of energy, but they are still there. No changes for GC as the Belgian van Gils retains the red. Cool! We're only gonna be 12 minutes behind. And here are your podiums, comes the end of La Vuelta, or at least first week of the Vuelta. Johannesson takes the stage ahead of Lutsenko, Gino Meda, and Rimko Venepol. GC-wise, it is a Belgian that leads with Van Riel 17 seconds ahead of Henrik Maas and Jonas Vingegaard in P3, 327 down. Ducarthy P10 already more than 13 minutes behind. This has been a, a first week for the, uh, the, well, not for the faint-hearted, sadly. Faint thought it is the new nickname of Garmin Sharp. Kevin Vermarke, nonetheless, showing the jersey on the podium at the Alto de Angliru. He arrived 45 minutes after the leaders, but he's alive, showing the Polka jersey, which clearly wasn't to, uh, or lived up to the expectations in today's stage. He leads ahead of Axel Mario and Remy Rocha. When it comes to the green jersey, it is Matteo Jorgensen leading ahead of Diego Lopez, who, uh, whoever dies, and Fabien Doubet. Well done to uh, Matteo. Three stages so far for the American on a Grand Tour that seemed to be completely doomed from the get-go when it comes to the best young rider classification. We are in 2053 and it is still Ramko Venepol ahead of Georg Steinhauser and Zandres Verblosen. If you look closely, you can see that Kevin Vermarke is just shy of one hour. So I've clearly made the right deal going for Kevin and not Remco. Finally, the best team is shockingly not us. It is today's winner, Spotify Quickset. Alright, to wrap up the episode, we will move to the Grand Prix de Plouet. Historically, a race I don't really win, um, but the last time I was in Plouet was for the European Championships that I have won with Switzerland, um, that I've simultaneously both won and lost as a... It's a win for Switzerland, but it was a loss for me because Tudor won it, not Garmin. I finished second, third and fourth. So, ideally today I can... I was going to say I can lose, you know, hopefully today I can win. Uh, with the rider of my own team, or uh, I don't know if Zoran Verenschold is there, but if Zoran is there, which I am not seeing so far, but I have forgotten which team he rides for, so maybe I'm just not seeing his name, uh, but if he had won that race, that would have been good, because he would be with me next year. Uh, but then again, it's not a European slash a world championship, so why would I care? I do not know. Uh, it's, it's tired. I'm late. Just under 7k to go, and we've had an attack which I had not uh, seen coming. Quinn Simmons has gone for a move. Timo Lenz, Marcus Hulegaard, Mats Pedersen, Oyer Lascaux, and Anthony Turgis immediately trying to follow, but the American has some sort of a lead. Pierre-André Côté will take the, um, the head of the group, heading into the final climb. We are going to come back on the um, riders that tried to attack, that tried to escape. Not much of a sweet escape for the breakaway that's uh, going to stay with uh, with Gwen Stephanie. 3.5k to go. Mark Cavendish is very well placed there. We've done very well. Uh, the sprinters aren't where Mark Cavendish is. Come on, Mark. His last race day was the Champs-Élysées and he was victorious. There, can he be victorious once again in France? We'll take a quick look. Mark Cavendish. Ah, uh, Kobe got blocked. Uh, that's a shame for him. Mark Cavendish, that's a close call with Stefan King, but it's a 1 2 for Cervelo. We're gonna wrap up the episode with a win. Thank God for that.
Sometimes I wonder how I can be this bad and this good simultaneously. Like, I've won three in a row, which is great. But there's been three or two mountain finishes, and I've lost 26 minutes. <laughs> uh, get it. We're 21st in the GC, 22 minutes behind Maxim Van Riels. Um, my main worry is that Matteo does not recover energy. He's currently injured. He's got... Well, he just doesn't feel well. Well, how about you You feel better? That should help, right? Nevertheless, this is going to be the end of the episode. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, a difficult Vuelta with an easier win in uh, Bretagne, France, but with the Grand Prix Ploué. We've got things to look out for in the uh, upcoming stages of La Vuelta, so that is everything that you'll see in the next episode. We will not do the Bing Bong Tour, because... Come on. But we'll have Malaga Malaga, we'll have Malaga Sierra Nevada, we'll have Granada Vélez Rubio, Murcia Benidorm... Oh, we're gonna have some, some fun after that day, I can tell that Marauders will definitely hit the clubs. Then Benidorm Valencia with the biggest hangover in the world for a stage sponsored by Tari Cruz. And we'll wrap it up with Lerida Andorra Cortals Camp For the next episode after that, episode 52, we'll finish La Vuelta and we'll do Quebec and Montreal. Meaning that episode 53, World Champs and end of the season. And then we'll see what we do for episode 54. You'll have to tell me what you guys want to see when it comes to teams. Should I change any or not? I know some people didn't want to see any changes, so maybe we'll do that. Or maybe I won't do any changes. Uh, if there's any transfers you want me to do, I'll try and apply them. If there's any races you guys want me to add, I'll try and do it. If there's any 23 content that I should do, let me know, because I'm yet to do anything with the 20, 23 GB. And I'll see you very, very soon. I hope you enjoyed the episode. My name is Guillaume. Have an amazing day. See ya. Pass me the phone.